Hey guys, you're listening to Same Sex Dialogue. This is K-Town, and this is episode 21, Sexy Safe Sex, with Ernie Hoskins. Here we go. Are you ready? Sit down and turn off the TV because it's time for the Same Sex Dialogue Podcast, where you'll hear the most entertaining discussions about gay topics, current events, and news. We bring you the very best of the LGBT community and its supporters. And guess what? Today, we have a special guest just for you. Now, here are your hosts, K-Town. And the super sexy fashionista herself, Kim Style. Hey there, it's Kim Style. Thanks for tuning in tonight to Same Sex Dialogue. I like when you sound like a librarian oh at the beginning. Oh my gosh, stop it. <laughs> what do you want me to talk like this? A sexy? You do, babe. Since we are talking about sexy, safe sex. Yeah, which we're going to have right Ernie after this podcast. <laughs> oh, we are? I don't know how safe it is, but I do know it's sexy. (laughs) Yeah, we do have Ernie on the show. Very, very glad to have him. We're going to be bringing him on momentarily. Um, We want to thank you guys for sticking with us this long. We have been gauging our statistics on iTunes, and it's been incredible and amazing. And I don't know if you guys, well, I think most of our listeners have iPhones, if you happen to go over there and you, you know, you look, I've showed you, you've been very surprised about it. I said, you have got to see this. I can't believe our it. Our popularity is almost maxed out on a lot of our shows. Mm-hmm. And that is something to be proud of because we're going up against like Ted Hour <laughs> and well, some of the other it's shows that are on of my RuPaul. Charm. <laughs> you know it is. <laughs> <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> yeah, you do it. My southern my charm. My southern charm. <laughs> I love it, baby. But we have been uh, really grinding. and No, we, you well, have been grinding. <laughs> you have, too. The only thing I do to prepare is I get my hair colored, I get my nails done, and I take a nap. <laughs> and I'm that is me on the grind. Cra- maybe you have done some things I've done right? a lot of research I'm the producer. and I am learning right. learning learning you I have. love you, learning yes you have you have been doing a lot of research and <laughs> I have been putting the technical side of it together and so I can't take all the credit I wouldn't dare do that honey you do do your part you know well, besides sitting over there looking sure. uh you're looking like some lord have mercy wrapped in some help me Jesus <laughs> <laughs> We should post a picture tonight. I'm serious. You look so good, babe. Um, do we have any emails uh, to answer or what? Actually, I chose this one because it's so fitting. Wait, 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 what? wait, wait, wait. Okay. I, I want to make uh, this announcement, you know, because today we just confirmed that uh, Kevin <laughs> Farrell, which AKA, you asked and I delivered, AKA, <laughs> AKA Tupperware um, lady. The Tupperware number one queen. Tupperware for four years straight. Drag queen, a- absolutely yes. Yeah, amazing has confirmed that um, he will be joining our show on March the tenth. What's funny is his character is DWI, and he his character is from Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> if if anybody hasn't seen that, please go it to YouTube. Is hilarious. Yeah, it's hilarious. So we, we're going to have to post some of those videos on our um, Facebook, yeah. and I will. Uh, absolutely put some of those through our Twitter feed as well. But um, he has been in uh, Frasier, Friends, um, My Name is Earl. Oh, he was in that show too? Yes. And, Veronica's uh, Closet, which I yeah, used to Veronica's love Closet. that I have, show. You, you know what? I remember you mentioning that um, a few months ago. You was like, baby, I really would like to watch Veronica's, Veronica's Closet. Closet. But I, I've never seen it. Is it a sitcom? Yes, it's a sitcom, and um, Christy Alley is in it. I like Christy Alley. Yes, well, then you would love that she's hilarious in that show. I want to see it. I want to see it. He was in that. Um, He's done a lot of theater, and um, right now his uh, journey has taken him in a different direction. We Mm want to hear all about that. Very successful, very, very nice, nice man. Oh, he is 
so very nice, nice. And entertaining. Yes, extremely very entertaining. funny. That's going to be a great show. Also, uh, we are working on some surprises uh, for. Uh, some former RuPaul contestants. <gasps> yes. um, Got to get confirmations on those. And we have uh, some, trying to get some former uh, actors from the L Word. We might have one of those confirmed. Yeah. Uh, hopefully this week. Hopefully. Um, but anyway, go ahead with your email. Okay. And we'll get the show started. Okay. <laughs> what... Should I do if I think I have been exposed to HIV? Oh, that's you a know good what? question. That's, oh, gosh. That's a good question. I think they should ask someone a little more qualified <laughs> <laughs> other than me. <laughs> well, we've had some um, interesting questions we emailed really to have. us. We really but have. But this is great. I mean, we, we decided to pull this one. Of course, uh, Ernie is going mm-hmm. to tell us all about that and more. And, and this get, is actually Joe from North Carolina. And Joe, I hope you're listening because we're going to have an answer for you tonight. Because yeah. that's what Ernie is ha- full of knowledge about. Absolutely. You know, prevention and and awareness yeah. and telling us what we need to do to uh, stay on top of our testing. And um, that's going to be a great show. You've known Ernie for a long, a time. long time. A long yeah. time. So this is going to be good. Um, what else do we have to talk about here babe well we just need to tell everybody please 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 go to itunes and give us a five star review yes if you enjoy our podcast if you know you you know you're you're uh you're digging what we're saying and you're laughing with us and everything please do that um we appreciate that so very much yeah um you can also go over to um the Google Play Store and download our app if you have Android. Um, that is always a good option because you're going to get push notifications whenever we have a live show. You can join us for that and you can chat with us as well. So that's always <laughs> fun, isn't it, honey? Oh, I meant to tell you that Ross had a show today. Yes. I got a notification that he was uh, live today and I was going to listen to it. However, it was about making a murderer. And I, you know, we haven't seen that yet. Right. And I didn't want it to spoil. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yep. want it to spoil. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. want to, um, uh, you know, take away the the benefit of, you know, watching that for the first time. So well, we're uh, almost there. a lot of people love it. So they do. I hear, I hear talk about that show all the time. And then we're still stuck on revenge because we can get an episode here and episode there. Yeah, so we're almost we have done with it. One more season yeah. left. And, and then we get to start. Yeah, one more season left, and we're done with that. Yeah, I cannot you know wait what? to see that. I saw Ernie that we're getting ready to interview. He watches Making a Murderer. Oh, he does. And I saw it on his Facebook <laughs> when I was stalking him the other day. <laughs> you are so crazy, you know. You have you been on Facebook lately? Yes, today. Well, I've been on there a lot too. I've been trying to kind of get some of our messages messages out there, and um, Twitter as well. You guys can. Mm-hmm. communicate with us back and mm-hmm. forth we've met some really nice people yeah we have on the Twitter. girls hour yes you kevin know hogan. we love the girls hour yeah oh kevin, kevin hogan we just uh launched. released his show tonight oh that good I just show to <laughs> yeah that's a good show we're we're going to schedule him to be back on the show in april to kind of do a follow-up and we, we couldn't possibly cover all the things for mm-hmm. um the B in LGBTQ. There's so, so much of it. There's there so is a much, lot of and it. I learned, and I'm gladly learning. But you know what? Why is it that when we interview these uh-huh. people, <laughs> I feel like they're my best friend. <laughs> I do. I'm like, I just know him. He's my best. I've never met him. He's such a good guy. And he and Peter T- Peterson Toscano. Yes, my Peterson best is hilarious. They are. He's very, <laughs> very intelligent. <laughs> we have to get him back on our show. Yeah, we are. We are going to get him back on and the show. And his friend Elizabeth Jeremiah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to. He has a um, equally intelligent husband that we're going to be getting on our show as well. Um, very, very interesting couple. I can just imagine some of the things that they talk about. Just to be a fly on the wall at their house. <laughs> I'm serious. Sipping on my toes. Oh, his podcast is, I mean, excellent. Yeah. It is 
own point. It's called Climate Stew, if you guys haven't heard that. Um, he puts a lot of effort, effort into it, a lot of effort into it, and he is uh, multi-talented. You know, he does, like, a lot of different characters during mm-hmm. that show. So, what's The thing about him is it's, it is about the climate, but right. it's really about what it does to the LGBTQ community. Absolutely. And it when is. he broke that down and explained that to me, it made so much sense. Now I listen to all of his podcasts, and they're very informative. Absolutely. But and he, he, his thing is, he goes, I try to tell you about the climate without scaring the snot out of you. Yeah. <laughs> he actually says snot. I'm like, oh, you're so fun. <laughs> he's, he's funny, and we do appreciate... Um, you know, the opportunity to have him on our show, I mean, because of what he's endured. Um, that show done really, really well on mm-hmm. iTunes. It still does, and it does well on Spreaker as well, and all the other places that we have that show uploaded to. So, And that's the one that's Shout out Ken. to Peterson for that. Love you, uh-huh. bestie. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please quit? Will you please stop it? Well, even Ross said he thinks that he and I were separated Spirit at animals. birth. <laughs> I said, yeah, I w- we were separated. Me, you, and Chrissy Teigen were separated at birth. <laughs> you love Chrissy Teigen, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. And Jenny Mai. Yes. You love Jenny Mai, Yes, Mai's I too. do. You do. So, <laughs> anyway, um, all right, so I'm ready to talk to Ernie. Let me get him on the line here, and we're going to see what he's up to and, and let him tell us all about this. Give me just a moment here. We're going to get Ernie on the line. Yeah, Ernie and I work together with the Pride Fest doing the fashion shows together. Guys, you're actually hearing us call Ernie right now, so he will pick up for us. (laughs) (laughs) It's the first time we're doing it like this, but it's, uh, I like it. Hello? Yeah. Hey, Ernie, we got Hi. you live with our fans. What's up? How's it going? It's Thanks going good. It's better now that you're on here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> aren't you sweet? Aww. Thanks for joining us, Ernie. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Glad the week's over. Ready to relax. Yeah, you c- celebrating anything this weekend? Uh, just being home for a weekend, which yeah. is sort of rare. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you've been on vacation. Be I have. I had a little food poisoning, but I'm I'm back. I'm Ouch. Better. Everything's okay. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. That's never good. No, it's, it's not. not. Um, Ernie? Yes. We're glad to have you on the show. And um, we want to start off by asking you, um, about, can you just tell our fans, you know, exactly what you do, you know, what, what you do in the sure. LGBTQ community? Absolutely. So I work for, uh, Positively Living, which is a HIV service organization. Um, I head up the prevention program. So I just, I'm out doing a lot of the testing for HIV and hep C now. Um, and then I also have some counseling programs. Uh, I give away a lot of condoms male and female condoms uh and lube a lot of lube uh-huh. and uh just talk to people um a lot about prevention techniques and all that stuff so okay you're all right. a busy That's busy man yeah. yeah you're a busy man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good work though it's good work yeah that is uh, good work and it's That's very why necessary i knew i wanted you on here and just to talk about this and and give more awareness to in, everybody, actually, even me, yeah. I need to be more aware. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been, I've been totally educated. Yeah, I started working there. Yeah, uh, over a year ago. I, yeah, so Ernie, Ernie, learning curve for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We want to um, give people just a background about you. Okay, so we want to ask you, where did you actually grow up? I uh, grew up in a small town called London, Kentucky. Oh, okay. London, hmm. Kentucky. Yeah. All right. Boy, um, I didn't know yeah. that. I I thought you grew up in New York. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. I thought you grew up in Milan, Italy. <laughs> that was it. That was it. That was it. Uh, right off of 75. Okay. Right okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So when did you first realize your sexuality, Ernie? Oh, I, uh, I think I was probably 
super young. Um, I remember uh, watching Saved by the Bell and really liking Zach Morris and just thinking, <laughs> huh, something, oh. uh, I don't know, this is okay. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you say liking Zach? Is that the blonde on there? Uh, yeah, that was the blonde. You're funny. Yeah. You're so funny. <laughs> well, well, that ha- was the first celebrity crush I had. Okay. And, and I sort of knew something. So growing up, your family's pretty accepting. How how was it with your family? Oh, uh, let's see. So my mom and my stepdad are super accepting and um, very welcoming of me and my husband, Todd. Um, my dad, on the other hand, is uh, maybe a work in progress, I guess, and uh I respect him, and I understand his beliefs, and we sort of just leave it at that. Okay. Um, we speak, and we see each other around Christmas, and, and that's okay. Yeah. That's, that's where it's at. Yeah. So. Just kind of cordial. Do you, yeah. uh, I know you're married, and I know your husband, Todd. Do, do you, when you go to your dad's, do you, does Todd go with you? No. My dad has never met Todd. Okay. Um, and, you know, it, it is hurtful, and um, I would be lying if I said, it wasn't, but, um, you know, you. I think the older you get, you sort of just say, here's what it is. I'm not going to change anybody, but I'm still going to live my life. Right, right. right. I want to live my life. I, so, can, um, yeah. I can totally relate to that. Yes, you can. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yes. Tell, and we'll switch gears a little bit on you. Um, All right. Tell us about your modeling career and how'd you get started in modeling. Oh, <laughs> Yes, you know I had yeah, to bring Kim that up. Kim told me about that. I had no <laughs> idea that you used to be a model. So long ago. So long ago. Uh, but it was a great experience, uh, especially for somebody growing up in a small town, uh, to then be sort of thrown into, uh, I, got, I had a chance to go over to Milan and live there for about nine months altogether. Nice. Um, but yeah, I was just sort, I sort of just started with a small agency uh, in a bigger city in Kentucky and sort of just one thing led to another and an agent saw photos and you know sort of the rest is history but uh but yeah had a good time in Milan uh lived in New York uh for three months and then I was there for 9-11 uh wow oh my goodness so wow. yeah then I just sort of said okay I'm going home yeah never doing anything again uh lucky to be alive um but um that put everything into perspective for me. Um, and then another agency found photos of me some way uh, in Hong Kong. So I, I had a chance to live over there for a few months. Uh, and at some point while I was there, I thought, okay, it's time to go to college and to give mm-hmm. myself an education. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I it, just put all that to bed and went on with it. Is that what brought you to Tennessee? Well, um, I... I started going to college at a Christian college in Kentucky called the University of the Cumberland. Shout out to them. Um, but uh, I was then down at, um, oh gosh, uh, the Carousel. That's the name of the bar. I was at the Carousel one night and met Todd. And then that's sort of how I ended up in Tennessee. Uh huh. I remember. Oh. We love the Carousel. We're so fond of the Carousel. It was. Yeah. <laughs> There's a was lot of a lot yes, of memories it was. there. I remember sure. seeing Kim there. Um, she really had me staring a hole through her, chasing Easy her around. Easy tiger. <laughs> Easy tiger. I can see why. I can see why. <laughs> <laughs> we miss it. I wanted to ask you, um, how did you get into advocating for health in the gay community? Uh, that's sort of, a, I guess, an interesting um, story I'd Really, had just been out. I was at, I think, the carousel one night, and some ladies from the health department were there, and they were doing some free testing. And um, I'm just always curious about what people are doing, so I was just asking them, you know, what they were doing, and they were telling me. Um, and they said, "Hey, can you go get some friends to come over and get tested?" And so I helped them get more people over and get tested. And I guess we all had a good time together, and they said, hey, why don't you come back out next time and help us get more people to come out and get tested? And uh-huh. so uh, one thing led to another, and they said, you know, you should really go get certified to do testing yourself, and you can help us. Um, and I just thought, wow, this is an easy way for me to help people. And right. I don't know. Something just spoke to me about it all, and I was just like, okay, good stuff. 
Yeah. Absolutely. You yeah. know what? You know, from my perspective, going out to like the carousel, for instance, I I felt like every, you know, people were pretty wild. You know, mm-hmm. they clearly sure. made it known why they were there to you know hook up or whatnot, and. <clears throat> I was wondering if you if you remember back in the day or even now, what were the statistics for infections in the Knoxville community? Uh, let's see. I can I can give you some uh, statistics on um, Tennessee just in general. Okay, I don't that's have fine. Specific for Knoxville, um, but for Tennessee, I would just say that. Um, in 2013, um, there were 839 uh, people diagnosed okay. um, with HIV, and that's in Tennessee. And Tennessee ranks uh, 15th among the 50 states uh, in the number of HIV diagnosis, uh, or that was in 2013 anyway. Uh-huh. Uh, 68.9% of those are uh, gay men, the new infections. It's, uh, it's a majority of cases are wow. you know, gay men. Yeah, so that's scary, um, and I think that's why I fought so hard, like to get my gay guys in to come and get tested. Because you know, as soon as you get tested, if you do happen to turn out to be positive, then uh-huh. you know there are ways to to treat it, and it's all manageable. It's not that death sentence that people sort of think it. You know, yeah, um, right. You know, not like it used to be. Right, it's not like it used to be. Absolutely. Because you um, know, you know, people back in the, in the day, even myself, thought. That was an instant death sentence. Death you know sentence. what I mean? You couldn't yeah. live with yeah. it. But yeah. that's that's yeah. very much not the case now, right? Not the case. No, people are living. I mean, we have clients now that are 70, 80 years old that are just, you know, moving right along just like anybody else. It's sort of like any sort of other chronic illness that you might think of, um, diabetes or anything else. So, Ernie, have you... Um, I know this, I have seen it on TV. I know I've seen it on BET where they were trying to bring awareness where uh, HIV was actually rampant among uh, black women. Can you tell me, or do you know anything about why that is? Um, I, from what I remember, they said something about there's more black men that are doing it. You know, they're, they're getting the infection from unprotected sex uh-huh. with black men. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, well, uh, we were actually in the office today, and we got this email, and this sort of floored us all. But one statistic that stood out says one in two African American uh, gay men will be will be diagnosed with HIV in his lifetime. You got to be kidding two. me! Wow, that's no. huge. I mean, that we, I mean, we were just floored. One out of two. Um, and then if you look at white uh, gay men or mm-hmm. bi- bisexual men, mm-hmm. uh, it's one out of 11. So why is that? I mean, I, I think it goes back to the stigma and the, how it's very taboo, maybe in the African-American uh, culture and the community, uh-huh. um, to be able to be open and uh, out about being a, a gay guy or bisexual guy or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the stigmas associated with HIV, Ernie? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I think one is that if you're positive, then you're like, you're dirty. You know, a lot of people like to say uh, on all the hookup apps that uh, I'm clean, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. I'm, I tested clean or right, whatever. Right, which, right, right. I mean, that in itself, which a lot of people don't think about it, you know, that it might be hurtful, but, you know, when I've when I deal with clients who are positive, they say, you know, like hearing somebody say that I'm considered dirty because, you know, that person is positive. But, uh-huh. I mean, that's, that's hurtful. It that is. is very that's, hurtful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one big stigma that I think we can take care of if we just educate each other a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so, well, we that's sure are number one thing. We, we sure are learning a lot about stigma. We, really Our, yeah. uh, we released uh, a, a podcast that we did with Kevin Hogan. He's a bisexual, and he uh-huh. uh, is writing a book, a self-help book called Healing Stigma. And you can go to his website, healingstigma.com, and he actually has help for people. That are faced with stigmas like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But um, what are the different ways that people, 
you can actually get HIV. Is it only sex trans sexually no, transmitted? Um, no, I mean, of course, that's probably the biggest one. Um, and, but it's you know, it can be breast milk. Um, it can be through, uh, of course, semen, and that includes pre-cum, um, and then blood, of course, and those are the those are the top, main top ways that you can. Uh, okay, so can yeah, diagnosed. yeah. Okay, so or that it's transmitted. Yes, a blood transfusion. I've forgotten about that actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't talked about AIDS in so long. I've for, actually forgotten. Yeah, all this stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird. I always thought that AIDS and HIV was the same thing. I had no idea until I started working, you know, where I work now. Tell and people the difference between totally the different. two. Yeah, yeah. Well, HIV is just the virus. And then if you're, um, you know, once you get tested and you know that you're positive, you start taking your medications, which mm-hmm. is what should happen immediately. Mm-hmm. Start on your meds. Uh, and if you are on your meds, then you're going to, that viral load is going to come down and it's going to be, um, you're going to be virally suppressed. Um, and then it doesn't develop into AIDS. Okay. okay. So I did not know happens. that. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's yeah. What happens. If it's less untreated, I suppose, or okay. if it goes very long term uh, and not treated, then right. it goes, it can develop into AIDS. Okay. So. Well, let me ask you yeah. if, um, People can live with full blown AIDS. Mm-hmm. Can they? They can. It's it's harder, um, and there's it's a lot more um, a lot more going on with your immune system, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's just it's a tougher thing. It's H, uh, HIV is maybe a little easier on the um, you know your immune system, and then when it uh, turns into AIDS, it's just it's a lot more difficult. I would say. Okay. Um. Yeah. Hmm. God, how so how are some of the ways you can't get HIV? Well, that's a really good question. You are just talking <laughs> with these questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you are prepared. Um, so I would just say, like, you know, of course, use a condom, use a condom, use a condom. And I know in the gay community that's not a popular thing. And maybe just in the population, you know, the world itself, like condoms aren't super popular. Um, but now there's this great new little pill called PrEP, which uh, stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. Mm-hmm. Um, and the pill, you go you know, to your doctor, you get prescribed this pill, um, and it can prevent HIV infection. Now, of course, they want you to use this oh, wow. pill or take this pill in conjunction with condoms. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Right, right, mm-hmm. um, right. But we know that sometimes people don't use condoms, and mm-hmm. this pill is sort of—I don't know—I don't want to say like a backup plan, but it's—it's it's just another layer of protection. That's how I like to describe it to, or describe it to people. Uh-huh. So. Uh-huh. Is this something that they you would have to take every day or daily? How how does that work? Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah. You have to take it daily. Um, you know, if you start to miss doses the effectiveness of the pill starts to go down. Mm -hmm. Um, So you want to make sure that you're taking that pill every single day. Um, It is expensive, but thankfully it's covered by most insurance companies. Um, And then, of course, in the South, it's a little harder to find a doctor to prescribe it because a lot of doctors, uh, you know, again, stigma. Mm-hmm. They think, oh, why do you need this pill? You must be having a lot of unprotected sex and blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah. you know what? Um, I was going to ask you that. Do you think that right. gives people a license to say, I'm just going to go out and have some unprotected sex? Well, I sort of think people are doing it regardless. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know? true. I mean, yeah, I it is true. You. It I is agree. true. Yeah. I mean, I, I think people are, are doing that, which is, you know, fun. I always say I'm very sex positive. I think people should be having sex. I think it's a great thing. Me too, um, Ernie. We do believe in a lot of sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn, Tiger. Kim, you better back me up here. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course. You know what, Ernie? But it, I think maybe the misconception is... Th- and you can confirm this, it doesn't protect you against other STDs. Right. That's right. That's right. It doesn't. Right. Perfect. It does not. It does right. not. You're absolutely right. And, and so that's why, you know, it, it's good to also use condoms. Mm-hmm. But, right. uh, 
so yeah, it doesn't protect against you know all that other fun stuff, chlamydia, syphilis, gonorrhea. Does not protect against that, but you know those things are treatable. Okay. Um, right. HIV is not curable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's a great idea for especially gay men. Yeah. I, I really do. Yeah. I really do. Well, you so. know what? We had an we had a uh, conversation. We had uh, Peter Tatchell. Um, on the show uh, not too long ago, and we, we talked to him. He's an LGBTQI mm-hmm. activist. Mm-hmm. Um, he does this internationally, but he's very much aware. He he also does uh, AIDS awareness too, HIV awareness. Um, he we asked him about that drug prep. Um, he said it's not really readily available over there yet. In is it, is it, is it the same case over here in the United States? I mean, can people get it right now and if they want it? They can, if they want, if they're smart about it, I would say, mm-hmm. uh, especially I'll just talk specifically about Knoxville in general. Um, if I can't tell you how many phone calls or messages I get a week, just saying, what is prep? How do I get on it? Is it mm-hmm. expensive? Mm-hmm. Where do I go to get on it? Um, uh, Thankfully, there are some people, uh, doctors in Knoxville, that know what it is, and they are uh, all about prescribing it. So uh-huh. I have uh-huh. some doctors that I can refer people to, and I'm happy to do that. Um, so there are doctors out there that will do it. Um, but if you don't have insurance, the drug company has a program where they will help you you know, pay for the medicine, but then you're still left with a doctor's visit and the lab work on your own right it's like right. 350 dollars so yeah a lot of people are finding it hard to pay for the lab work and the doctor oh absolutely um so you know but it is available and people can get on it um you just sort of have to know where to look i guess and, and who's prescribing it so is there some type of financial assistance that people can get if they want it there is yeah, I mean, the, the drug company offers a uh, patient assistance program for uh-huh. people who don't have insurance, uh-huh. but then they also offer a, uh, a copay card uh, for somebody who may have insurance, and then they're, they may have like a, a, a copay left over. And uh, the copay card sort of covers up to $3,600 uh, a year of the medication cost. So that's, that's awesome, too. Okay. Well, we actually had an email about this, uh, and I just wanted to save it for you to answer. If someone believes they have been exposed to HIV and are any precautions they are there any precautions they can take to prevent, um, you know, contacting the virus, such as like maybe someone's blood. If they if they've been exposed to someone's blood, is there any precautions they can take to prevent infection? Right. Yeah, uh, I think if, well, and it all depends on the timing of it, but there's also where there's PrEP, which is pre-exposure prophylaxis. There's uh-huh. also uh, something called PEP, and that's post-exposure prophylaxis. So you can actually, if you think you've been exposed to HIV in some way, uh, if you go to your ER, local ER, within 72 hours uh-huh. of that possible exposure, you can tell them uh, what happened. And there is a round of medication that they can put you on. Wow. That would stop the virus. Okay. Uh, oh, that's completely. great so, to know. Yeah, great it is. That's know. good to know. I had yes. no idea about that. Uh, Absolutely. No Absolutely. idea. It's, it's, it's fascinating. All this is it's, it's great. I mean, great we've come a problem. long way in the last, we what, have. 20 years? Yes, we have. How old is AIDS, by the it's way? It's like early great 80s, time. isn't it, Ernie? It is, not, it is, and then, you know, there's some cases or some people can say it's, it can be traced back a lot further than that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I think it all depends on who you talk to, mm-hmm. to be honest. But I think in the late 70s, early 80s is when we really started to see it, um, you know, okay. from the, you know, the pandemic that it is or was, you know. Okay, so how do people get tested? They can call me. They can call me or come and see me. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we have many thousands of listeners in Knoxville. Um, and so won't you give them your number and your information yeah. so that they can yeah. call um, you? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, they, you know, you can also, um, of course, Google uh, 
you know, HIV testing in Knoxville will pop up there or uh, just go to our website, which is positively-living.org. Or you can also go to my personal, like the, the Project ACT uh, website, which is uh, www.projectactknox.com. Uh, and then you can actually uh, shoot me an email from there, and I'll get back to you. And then you can also contact me in the office. Uh, my number there is 865-525-1540. My extension is 226. Awesome, Ernie. Ernie, everyone that we talk to on our show, we just ask them just what would you leave our listeners with, a, an overall comment or sentence or song or paragraph, whatever you want to say, what would you, how would you wrap it up uh, like a final thought? What would you say? Um, hmm. I think for me, I always like to tell people that while I'm not personally infected, I'm very affected by HIV and uh, I'm really touched by people's stories um, who share with me every day. Um, so I think that's something that maybe everybody else could look at it maybe the same way. While you might not be infected, it's very easily to be affected and just, you know, lend somebody in your ear and uh, try and put yourself in their shoes and, and treat them, you know, the way that you'd want to be treated as well. So just Love everybody. That's, That's sort of right. My final thought, I guess. Absolutely. Yes. That's my motto, yeah. too. Just love everybody. It's how, you yeah. know, I said this once um, in the, we're trying to break down the walls, first of all, in between the LGBTQ. And uh, I'm learning how many walls there are. And I'm like, don't worry about who people have in their beds. Just love them. Yeah. We just have to yeah. love each Absolutely. other. That's all you, you have know? to do. Um, we can't. Um, we can't push away the other segments of that's right. our community, right? That's right. So we best serve each other when that's we know right. more about each other. Yes. Wow, this yeah. has been so enlightening, Ernie. It has. And we thank you so very much for coming yeah, on to our all. show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been an honor, great pleasure. Uh, totally, totally and in awe of both of you and for everything you're doing for the community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Absolutely. You, Ernie. Ernie, we hope to see mm. you guys out. I'm sure we will. Yeah. And uh, thank you for coming on the Same Sex Dialogue. Before we go, i like to say, baby, I love you. I love you more. <laughs> That's the end of our show. Don't you dare leave without going to iTunes to subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Ciao, baby.